This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about La Notte Bianche, a.k.a. White Nights from 1957, directed by Luciano Visconti. Visconti. Biscotti. No tagline, RJ, but we got a synopsis. Hmm. A lonely city transplant and a sheltered girl, haunted by a lover's promise, meet by chance on a canal bridge and begin a tentative romance that quickly entangles them in a web of longing and self-delusion. Tentative, you say? Mm Mm-hmm. Strange word placement. Tentative. Tentative. It's like, uh, almost, uh, no, not quite. It's it's a soft yes. Yeah. um, Yeah, well, probably. uh, But we're not going to really seal that deal. I non, mean, we we non, might non-committal. Non-committal. Yeah. That's another way to put it. Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, so hey, Weird. RJ, we have got Dostoevsky yeah. in the house. Oh, uh, one of my favorite uh, favorite playwrights. <laughs> I'm always I'm always talking about Fyodor. I'm like Fyodor, what up, brah? Yeah. You know, crime and punishment. You know that shit. That's him, right? Uh, yeah. You wrote you wrote a few things. Well, I. I I mean, then, I, he's got that the idiot. He's got mm-hmm. uh, br- uh, brothers, uh, Karamazov. I've read that one. Yeah, you never read the idiot. No, but I read brothers Karamazov. No, yeah, how, how was that? It's I of, don't remember. Well, I, I know I, I've I, read it, but I don't I remember. I do know that uh, there's a film adaptation of it that is in uh, George Romero's top ten movies of all time. Yeah, but he's dead though. And King of the Dead. Oof, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. Suppose. That's right. Uh, so how many Dostoyevskis uh, do you have uh, kicking around all the time? Oh. You always got one in the background, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's on the back burner. Yeah. You know, I, I like to just really savor the page. Like, I, I read oh, one yeah. read one at a time. Yeah. And, and, Which you know, is great. and I, I just I devour it. <laughs> well, you're you're usually reading one and audio booking another one at the same time, right? <laughs> Double fist in Dost. Yeah. What else are you gonna do? Like really, really, Jared. What else are you gonna do? <sighs> you know, live my life. Okay. How would Dost so, live his? So, uh, so this is based on a short story. From eighteen uh-huh. from eighteen forty eight, uh, okay. of the the same title, mm-hmm. um, it is. Let's see here. It's a synopsis of it. Uh, White knights is told in the first person by a nameless narrator. The narrator is a young woman living in Saint Petersburg who suffers from loneliness. Um, did, I, did I say young man or young woman? I think you said young narrator. The the narrator is a young man living in St. Okay. Petersburg, who suffers from loneliness. He gets to know and falls in love with a young woman, but the love remains unrequited as the woman misses her lover with whom she is finally reunited. Is that what happens in this movie? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the short story is uh, more succinct than this film. Um, oh. So anyway. So yeah, uh, I didn't know anything about this White Knights. This is our second Visconti movie. Visconti. Mm-hmm. Well, at least this one, the actors are the appropriate ages, I think, for the most part. Well, what from the from the leopard? Oh, uh, what movie was I thinking of with the Italian ki- That's guys? That's Fellini. Uh, Los Fellinis. I Vitiglioni. Ah, uh, Vitiglioni Visconti. Same thing. Mm-hmm. The leopard. Yeah, I remember this guy now. <laughs> the leopard. Legal leopard. You know that one? Yeah, with Burt Lancaster as an yeah. as a, uh, dubbed into Italian. Yeah. I mean, well, how else are you going to do it? How else are you going to show him? You know what that's, I mean? That's movie magic. Movie uh, magic. So, I mean, I did, yeah, again, I didn't know much about this. Uh, I did, of course, see that uh, oh, Marcello Mastroianni is in it. Um, who's like uh, uh, the man about town of Italian cinema? Uh, d- but d- did you also know though, RJ? Did you know that like so? Uh, Natalia, the, mm-hmm. the the female protagonist of this, Maria film. Shell, yeah, yeah. So so that's Superman's mom from Richard Donner's Superman. 
Yeah, I know. But her lover, uh, did you recognize him? Old, uh, is G- Superman's dad? Jean Marais. That's, that's uh, the beast. But after he Which turns, the, the beast from like Beauty G- and the G- Beast. How, I No, I didn't recognize that. How was I supposed to know? It's He's a pretty like distinct looking man. I feel like he's not in this movie very much, though. No, I mean, he's not supposed to be, but he is. The, there's like a big segment of this movie where he's uh, farting I, I, about. I know him more from uh, Elenia and her men, or Elena and her men, the Jean Renoir film. Jared, you remember mm-hmm. that one? Yeah, yeah, that's where I know him most. Yeah, one of my favorites of his. Yeah. Great performance. Great. Great performance. Wow. You, you sound like a. You write it home online. Incre- incredible storytelling. You should, you're, you're sounding like a guy on Criterion Reddit. Just terrific. You, you just, I, you know, because if you said, you, you could say that about every movie. I, the pacing is outstanding. Yep. Yeah, the uh, it's so inspirational. Uh, think of all the movies that it inspired. Think, Man, just think about, like, man, dude, you're talking about Chasing Amy? Like, wow. Do, do you know about art, Jarrett? Wow. The you Irishman. You're talking about The Irishman now? Well, have you seen that cover? It's just hands. <laughs> yeah, you ever seen hands, Jared? Man hands. Man hands. Old, wrinkly man hands. But no, I did not realize that it was that guy. Okay. Yes. Mom. Well, Since you're asking, I did not know. I do now. Now you do. If that, if that counts for anything. It doesn't. It means absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, Good. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, it opens up with uh, Mario. Uh, yeah, Mario, Mar- Mario, Mario arrives uh-huh. in, in town. Um, it's a set. It is not. Yeah, it's not a real city square. Um, you'll notice immediately this is a very nicely shot movie. It's very well photographed. Um, Mario is like looking around for friendship. Mm-hmm. He, he, like he's gonna, unless I mean. Or more, I don't know. He was talking to that dog quite a bit. And then the dog, uh, the dog's yeah. dog. And I, I wish that dog would have hung around a little bit more. And we got a little bit of that Umberto D action that we all. Yeah, crave. I was sad to see him go. Some Wendy and Lucy times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, no, we're going to get that movie. No, mm-hmm. um, he's he's kind of uh, you know nosing around, hanging outside the bar. The dog or the man? The man. The dog's yeah, gone. He, the dog leaves for a while. Yeah, he comes back later. Eventually. Yeah, w- way later, way later. But um, yes, yes. But he comes across the scene of a uh, of a, a pretty blonde girl being harassed by some uh, lecherous, horny Italian men on a bike. What <laughs> were they? Like, uh, there's room for you in, but right in the middle, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. we and we go. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Well, it's it's a lot of hey, why don't you get on the bike? No, no, I'm good. Hey, get on the bike. And then you go, uh oh. And then Mario What's going goes, on here? Hey, leave her alone. He says, Hey, leave her alone. You a creep. <laughs> Give her some space. Can't you tell she's with me? Yeah, he does. Uh. Yeah, she's she's with me. And then and then uh but that's not true. But it kinda works. And he starts you know, he starts like chatting her up. And she's mm-hmm. trying to be like, you know, nice. And yep. she's a little off though. She's and, and there is like an element of um, flirtation, but then she kind of retracts that. Um, there's some fibbing, some spinning of lies to get out of something that she doesn't actually want to do, which is hang out with this guy some more. Yes. And she's like, yeah, well, I'm going to turn in here. I'll see you. I'll see you later. And he's like, okay, I'll walk you to the door. Bye. And then he leaves. And he's like, ah, yeah, I still got it. And then she leaves to go back mm-hmm. out in the streets because she's looking for someone, something. Somehow? Yep. Um, ne- next, The next day, uh, Mario is, like, getting ready. He's, like, you know, shaving, brushing his teeth, mm-hmm. you know. And just getting it fucking everywhere too. oh yeah he's sloppy getting... sloppy pool of uh of he's tooth, so... toothpaste like slop and and he's like doing something where he's like brushing his chin a little bit like well he's... well it's because it's running down his chin yeah but like what's, what's that going so what, that's not going to stop it 
he pulls it up a little bit with his toothbrush. He gets it all over his hands, and then he goes to his wardrobe and he pulls out his uh, his nice suit. And he's getting toothpaste all over the fucking thing, all over it, Jared. <sighs> yeah, all yep. over it. He sure does, sure does. So, but he's getting gussied up. He's a little bit. Yeah, he's he's going to go meet this girl again. He's going to show up where he left her, but uh, she's like, "Oh no, I don't want anything to do with this." I, I I don't I don't want this guy, bug bugging me. Well, I mean, he imposes himself a little bit. A little bit. He's wearing a trench coat. You know, that tells yeah. you everything you need to know about a man. Do you have a trench coat? I do not. You don't. No. Nope. What would you do if you did? Well, I'd be out. I'd be hanging out in underground car garages. With a samurai sword, I'd be wearing a pair of jeans and sneakers, and mm-hmm. I would be fighting immortals. Are you saying that you're Blade? Well, no. I, well, I mean, I could be Blade, but I also could be Highlander. <laughs> I, you can be Highlander. I will be Blade. How's you, that sound? You, yeah, you can. You can be Blade. I would like to be Blade just, in this just, scenario. Just, just make sure you pay your taxes. Oh, Jarrett. Jarrett. Taxes. They're going to huh. they, they get some of us. Well, they got Wesley. They what? got Blade. Not oh, Blade. The, they got Blade so they can get yep. us. Why don't they bring back Blade? Why don't they bring back the real Blade? Which Blade? Wes, they're Wesley. trying to bring Black. Well, he, well, he's trying to come back as Blade, but they're like, yeah, ah, we're going to go in a different direction. We're going with Even though Mahershala Ali. People would shit their pants and like they they want Wesley Snipes Blade more than anything in this world. All I've been trying to say since we started this podcast was where can I get more Blade? Because I, that's hey, all I fucking care. I don't hey, care about Criterion movies. If, if, if fucking Disney Marvel wants my money, make make it happen, okay? We want we want Wesley Blade, even though he'll be old, he he will, he will not be able to do the same stunts. But that's what stuntmen are for. Something in her for. I just need him there delivering the lines and doing what I want him to do. I don't need anything fancy. I just, as you said, just give me Blade. Just give me Wesley Snipes. That's all I need. That's all I need. So there's a little bit of like, oh, he comes in while she's trying to like avoid this guy and he overhears it. She feels bad about it. And now she goes like, well, I guess we'll hang out with them. Mm hmm. And then they, she starts giving her whole life story about her family and making rugs and her blind mm-hmm. grandma and uh, attaching her to her apron so she couldn't get away. And have you ever done that? Nope. Can't say as I have. have it's you, not uh, a bad what, move. Yeah? Move. Yeah. I clip myself to Andrea frequently so she can't get away. Oh. Is that for your protection, though? Uh, so, so, so you're not, like, going out buying Gundams? No, I mean it's more of an insurance policy. I see. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. That's what that's what this thing right here is, Jerry. Oh, it's part of the contract. Yeah, cl- clipping myself to her where she can't. Wow, now that 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 audio clip might have come out weird. Interesting. So anyway, <laughs> um, so we get a flashback. <laughs> uh huh. Of like, well, what? Why are you lying? And then she's like, well, I'm waiting around for a guy. And we got we got uh, we get yeah. an extended 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 sequence of scenes of her hanging out with this Jean Marais guy mm-hmm. with old with old beast and um I don't know I, what do you what do you not know about it I, I don't know how I, f- I don't know how I feel about this movie at this point RJ I'm, I, at this point this is like when I was like oh my god how many fucking of these movies am I going to be watching in this <laughs> criterion collection this the same fucking story I feel they more already, uh, than I, you'd care for, I think. More than I could ever fucking care for. Um, yeah. I started having flashbacks to indiscretion of an American wife. Oh uh, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, this, 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 tr- these tropes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's dudes in trench coats, very suave, like dance hall scenes, and everyone's dancing. I, fu- like, I hate, I hate it. I fucking hate it. I, I don't care. Like fuck you, Europe. I thought you I, liked I, the... I hate it in Roger Corman movies. I don't fucking uh, like it in these uh, Italian, European, uh, highfalutin movies. They're boring. Ooh, so highfalutin. I get it. It's got energy though, and people will talk about the editing. Someone will. 
I couldn't even find an essay for this movie. It's out of print. Good. Um, I, from the sounds of it, it's unavailable on the old Criterion's page. I don't know if it's out of print, but it seems to be close to that. Um, so hmm. we already, like, I mean, when did you realize, oh, they're not going to get together? I'd say about, it was probably like 30 minutes in. Yeah. That, yeah like, I mean, because they haven't even really done anything yet. No. Because I was like... I, the first 10 minutes is just him walking around by himself. Yeah. Oh, so. hey, look, it's two attractive people. They they should definitely hang out. They have so much in common. It's like, no, they don't. I mean, like, in, 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 in a movie, like, oh, it's about the desperation of, the, of this. This guy puts yeah. all this effort. And he has nothing to show for it, which is like one of the descriptions of like in the synopsis, which is fucked. It's so stupid. I, Yeah. Let me read this to you. Yeah, I'm so, interested now. So anyway, so they're going to, or will they, won't they? Is it going mm-hmm. to happen? But it's not like in that traditional way of like, oh, she doesn't know if he likes her and vice versa. And then they're like, all these other things are kind of working against them. And are they going to wind up together? It's like, no, it's very explicit. He likes her and she likes him. But at the same time, she can't get over this guy who's not that impressive in the first place. But, Ooh, fuck. but, but, you know, uh, <laughs> As the kids like to say, uh, tr- treat a mean, keep them keen. That's uh, excuse me. That's what the kids say. That's what the kids. Uh, say. I, and I never said the kids were nice. The kids are bad. The kids are very bad. Okay. Uh, that's what this plays out as. You're like, why does she bother with this fucking loser? But hey, sometimes love it's a hell of a thing. It makes you do fucked up things. What have you done for love, Jared? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Give me an example of something that <laughs> you, you you maybe wish you hadn't done now. Oh, RJ. It was that too personal? What's that? <laughs> Someone's gonna email it in next week, I'm yeah, sure. They can. They can definitely email in next week. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll wait for you, Sam. Oh god, what is Sam gonna do now? Oh dear. What's oh, Rob what, well, what's Rob Eagle gonna say when he finds out? Rob Eagle? I don't know, dude. I, I don't know. He's got your address, man. So all I all I got to say is watch out. Because I don't use my address for anything. I always give your address for stuff. Well, it's, well, it's someone else's address, too. Collateral damage, man. Yeah. They should, well, they should have known that before they well, before you were there. You well, know? If, if you have anything on hold at the comic book store, be careful. I If I do? Yeah. I don't read. I don't know how to read. That's true. So... <sighs> Anyway, yes, it's, it's a whole lot of back and forth, right? Uh, yeah, it goes back for a bit on and on and on. Um, so here's the here's the plot from Wikipedia. Okay. Um, a lonely young man, Mario, meets a lonely young woman, Natalia. Mario mm-hmm. is lonely for social reasons. He is a stranger and a newcomer to town. Natalia is lonely because she has always lived in isolation, even in the heart of the city. Her loneliness is intensified because she is in love with a man who may not ever return to her, but who continues to occupy her heart to the exclusion of any other possible relationship. In turning the Dostoevsky story into a film, Visconti eliminated the first-person narration and made Natalia less of an innocent and, at times, something of a hysteric and a tease. This is the like, this is the encyclopedic entry on the internet. Uh, for his part, Mario rejects obvious offers of romantic attention from other women in the story, holding on to a fruitless obsession. Wow, like, what the fuck? Who wrote this? <laughs> Hey, he's a pretty good guy, though. He could be getting some side pieces here, but he's holding on for the one that's not even going to work out. So he's a good guy. He's a good he's, guy, RJ. He's got a lot of opportunity some, to get in there and get stinky. He, he's yeah. a, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that not ha, what people ha, talk ha, about? Ha, hash, hashtag uh, st- uh, get, getting stinky. Well, you ain't never put no stank on it, Jarrett? My goodness, RJ. I, I, wow. This is, you're stealing my gimmick here. You're stealing my thunder. I didn't think getting stinky or putting stank was oh, uh, that dude. out of control. Well, I but, mean, uh, you, you, I mean, for you. For me, uh, yeah. Is, is, it, is it the, is it the heat? Is it, is it getting How to you? How hot is it? Is it getting, is it getting to you? I, I can see the beads of sweat on your brow right now reflecting. 
I mean, it's a little hot. I think yeah. the I think what we're trying to say is this movie really <laughs> evoked a reaction in us. A non-reaction. Right. Mario thanks yeah. the young woman for the moment of happiness she has brought him. However, he is left alone at the end of the film, befriending the same stray dog he met at the beginning. He is back at square one and has put more energy into pursuing the fantasy of an obsession rather than any prospect of real love. Like, what? No. Why? Why is that? We're, we're, I, mean, we're, this I think is... that's assuming a little bit. So anyway, this this, this 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 I read. I'm like, wow, this is uh, some real uh, projection. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like thus given up forever. He became he lashed out violently for his celibacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, Jared? His involuntary <sighs> yeah. celibacy. Uh, did the ending have any impact on you? Uh, where it's like she's very like uh, she, she she like she she runs off. And he's like, well, that's it for me. I'm going to go die in the gutter. And she comes running back. And she's like, thank you so much for everything you ever did. But it could never be. I'm sorry. And then you're like, oh, man, that really hits. And then she leaves. And she goes hang out with uh, the Beast anyway, the Brock Lesnar. And Oh, is that who it was? Yep. Okay. And, uh, yeah, then fine. We get across the screen. Uh, so this movie is fine. like... This, between this and Crazed Fruit, uh, these these yes. movies about dudes and ladies and black and mm-hmm. white foreign films, uh, it's it's really putting a, a real bum, bummer on me. I uh, I did this is not my thing, maybe no? because on Old Letterbox, it seems like people really like this movie uh, for the most part. Like up, up, up until today, it seemed like this was like four star, four star, four star. And now I watched it, and now you've watched it. I see uh, Ollie G watched it. He dropped a two, two note on this. <laughs> yeah, he he's pretty hot with the two notes, you know. No, yep. so yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at with this movie. Okay, I don't know. Maybe it's these Good to know. maybe it's these Russian writer types because you know, remember remember Gorky? Remember hey, Ma- remember Maxim? You that, better be real remember, fucking careful remember, what remember, you say about remember, Gork. Remember, remember those lower depths? Remember those? Um, the, yeah. uh, I, I remember, but I, I just, I, I don't know. I, you you better be careful what you're saying about the gore, man. I, I, I didn't see nothing. I'm just saying I'm remembering okay. Gorky. I still got Mother over here. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. I just wanted to um, say. The, the, the memories of delicious treats from the, the, the motherland. Yeah. Um, Oh, speaking of which, yeah, just we're on the topic. I sent a care package to uh, our friend at the Gorsk- Gorksky Institute, and it was returned to sender. So if you're listening, send your address again, potentially. <laughs> if you're listening, that is. Yeah. But nobody listens to this podcast. Man, right? this is like this is what happens when we mail things to people. They just get returned. Just send me a real address. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I I thought I did it right. Maybe not, but. <sighs> What were you talking about? How much you loved this movie? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. This is the, op- this is like, so this movie's about friend zones, maybe? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever been in the friend zone, Jarrett? Uh, probably, yeah. In in my youthful days. It's, it's yeah. not it's not the best place to be in. Uh, but you know, we're, the worst place to be, though, is a guy on Reddit and uh, online. And, 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 and then one day, RJ, you're, you're writing about ladder theory. And and oh. Ch- Chad's and Stacy's, and then um, you talk about how nice of a guy you are, and the next uh, you're being talked about by RJ on the podcast. Real good yeah, dude. You get a hashtag. Which which one is that? Uh, is that the regular incel one, or is that yeah. uh, an even bigger one? Isn't this is it how? I mean, I'm surprised this didn't get the incel fanfic label from you, RJ. Uh, maybe I neglected it. I can, I can, I can update that immediately. This, this seems to be like part of the origin story of like some like Steve Ditko esque figure. Uh, it's like this is how it played out, and this is what it was. <laughs> this is the story of a young man who wanted to get some but couldn't. And this is in cell yeah. fanfic. <laughs> this is this is my story. Anyway, directed by Dick Wolf. <laughs> Dick Wolf. Right. So anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell this, me more. This is what people want. Talking about white knights. Is it? Uh, maybe. I don't know. What's a white knight, Jarrett? 
I don't know. It's like so like because of the heat and brightness of their love, it it, it lit up the night. Yeah. Or I don't a, care for that. It's, it's about white people. <laughs> I don't care for that either. No. No, and I and I don't care for this movie, RJ. Oh, really? I thought you loved this thing by I the know. way you were talking. So what a swerve. You no. really swerved. Yeah. Dog. Th- yeah, this movie uh I don't know. There Not for you? Not for me. Not for me. It's my, fine. my dude, uh, it's okay. you don't have to got, like them all. It's got a lot of screen presence. It's got good. It's got it's got the actors. It's got mm-hmm. the it's got that cinematography. Mm-hmm. Um, but this thing, boy oh boy, even at like what 142 minutes, it drags so hard. I I actually tried to give this a second shot because the first time I watched it, I you felt tried to give it a second shot. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, so I because I was pretty like what the fuck did I just do? Like, what was this yeah. movie? Like, was I just not in the right mood for this? So <clears throat> and if I feel that way, I'm like, well, I better watch it a second time and see if it like works a little bit better. That's fair. No, no, I, uh, I didn't get through that second viewing. Really. I just was like, no, I feel the exact same way. This, it, yeah. it, I don't, it isn't just me. It's just not for me. I mean, at least you tried, right? At least I tried. I mean, that's, that's more than a lot of people can say. At least you tried. Yeah. You know? trying is half half the battle rj what did you think of white knights white knights uh so i i'm more or less in line with you i think you uh, i don't think i disliked it as much as you did but uh the first like five minutes of this movie when it was just uh our boy walking around by himself and it looked very pretty and there was all these streets and there's a really good so no can you say that again what was there a nice there was a, a good ESO product. Oh, placement. yeah. There is some big ESO. There's some pretty nice yeah. signage in this. There's good signage, yeah. <laughs> uh, good signage. I really, like, I think the first five minutes of this movie are real good. Where you just walk around, you get ESO, yep. you get uh, streets and rivers, a dude's canoeing. ESO. I, 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 you support uh, oil and gas, right? Uh, I think ESO's electric now. Hmm. Let's just say say it and hope it comes true. <laughs> that's what uh, they say at Gonzo Gas. Ooh, Gonzo. That's a deep Creepsville uh, pool mm-hmm. for the listeners out there. You you guys look up Gonzo and see what happens. Yeah. Not that Gonzo. Mm-hmm. A different Gonzo. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, a movie. Uh, I think <laughs> the, first five, <laughs> the first five minutes are real nice. Uh, like, it's got great, like, my answer, or the fuck you call that? It's got great pictures. Compos- composition. Looks pretty to your eyes, Jarrett. Yep. Um, it, it looks real nice, and I, I liked the prospect of a sad man walking around. Um, sounds amazing to me, right? Sounds great, but then you get introduced to the other characters. Uh, and, like, the lady, she's not a bad actress or anything like that. Uh, she, like, they're all, they all act well. It's, um, I don't care at all for this story no. because it's kind of just, like, and I get like I think a lot of people like it because it's like finger quote relatable where it's like, yeah, a lot of people are put in that position. It's like, do I go with this person or that person? It's like I like I guess that's fine. I've never really been in that because I've been with my wife for like 28 years. So I've never really done anything like that, Jared. But I know other people have and that's fine. But in terms of this movie. I just I wasn't super interested in it because it's like he's kind of weird. He like pushes off those creepers, but he's like, hey, listen, baby, I won't <laughs> let those guys be weird. To you. I'm not going to let them out creep me. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, but I am walking you home. And she's like, no, I don't need to walk home. I'm walking you home. Okay, <laughs> sugar. sugar tits. He drops a, a Mel Gibson sugar tits on her. Yeah. But it, it's like that where you're just like, listen, baby, I won't let them do that to you. Only <laughs> I will do that yeah. to you. Yeah. And you go, okay, that's weird. Um, and then, then he exclaims, let's get stinky. <laughs> that's a quote verbatim, right? Yeah, that's from uh, RJ's screenplay. <laughs> that could mean a lot of things, though, Jarrett. That could just be be ordering Pizza Hut, getting <laughs> stinky with some <laughs> Pizza Hut. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, I would definitely want to be taking that call from you. <laughs> oh, uh, Pizza it's Hut, like... how can we take your order? <laughs> I want to get stinky. <laughs> Isn't that isn't that the joke online, sir? This is a Wendy's. Yeah. 
But I mean, I still, I think that holds. I would call Pizza Hut and ask for the stinky. You know what I mean? I've got different, I have different connotations for individuals named stinky. Well, see, this is where we're having a dilemma, Jared, yeah. because I, I, I don't, I don't put uh, sexual connotations to things. Not usually. Not usually. Not usually. But here we are. Well, I was talking about stinky in the literal sense. Mm. Sometimes people do get stinky. Uh, so, anyways, this movie it stinks. Um, yeah, it's not great. Like, uh, I, I don't, uh, I didn't see all this love for it until afterwards when, like, I logged it, and then I saw other people with like very high ratings, and I was like, hmm, maybe they saw something I didn't. Um, I think it looks nice. It's acted well. I don't really care for the story, especially just because I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like they don't make um, like the the girl enters, and then I I felt like they didn't make her like super likable in a sense. Like she's appealing to him, but then also she's kind of like, but I'm doing this other stuff with these other guys. And then it's like she's young and he's old. Like when they're at the yeah. dance club, he is an old fuck, isn't he? Yeah, but they go to that dance club and uh, he he busts it out a little bit. But you can tell oh, he's yeah, just like, I don't want to fucking be here. It's kind of like, like remember when uh, Patrick Stewart starts doing the mambo in Star Trek Insurrection, and he goes, "Mmm, that's more like it." I do remember, and that is uncomfortable for everyone involved in that scene. <laughs> yep. Uh, but what else we got here? Um, the other dude, you don't see him, which is intentional, and like that's fine. So I, I don't, it's whatever. But when, so when it gets to the end of the movie, and she goes with him, and it's that nice little bridge scene. Holy fuck! I, he was only like thirty three in this movie. He looks fifty eight. He's so he's so gray looking. I mean, it's like it's a black and white movie. He, and looks really he, he looks gray because he that's how he's photographed. Uh, that's that gray, Italian in gray scale. Oh, it's fucking whatever. I remember many. You're smoking like a pack a day, and everyone around you is smoking their packs. And uh, you, you've uh, probably uh, lived. You just lived through a world war and uh, the the stress of that shit. And uh, yeah, you come out looking like a bag of shit on the other side. Not just that, smoking all the coffee, all the womanizing. Like it, it really takes it out on you, Jer. It really takes it out on you. My, my man god um so yeah you uh th- that <laughs> other guy's not super appealing um but uh fuck I, oh yeah so this scene at the end it looks nice but i don't i didn't feel anything there where she's like i'm with him and he's just off in the corner crying i was like shut up my god so grow up okay in okay in the movie like or sorry the actors uh there is they're two years apart in age Ooh, if I had to guess without you have saying that, I would have guessed 15 years apart. <laughs> yeah, there's two years. Yeah, she, she, she was very so, young. So Maria Schell was very... born. Yeah, she was born. So she was, yeah, she's Austrian Swiss. Uh, so, so maybe uh, they're doing something differently over there. And uh, in Italy, though, mm, mm, mm. Mm. I don't know. Two years difference. That's, that's crazy. Because mm. he looks, I don't know. He looks incredibly old. He's looking haggard. He's looking incredibly old, man. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I didn't much care for it. I feel like, like I said, I think you disliked it a little bit more than I did. I just, I just think I felt like it wasted my time. Yeah, <sighs> and that's fair. Yeah, like it, that's like that's the th- worst thing you could really do is make me feel like uh, I didn't get anything out of this, and this feels like work. This isn't mm-hmm. this isn't fun. Stop! Yeah. Stop making! Stop! putting movies in your collection that make me feel like this is a slog rather than like, Oh, that's fun. Like, fuck. I know Star Trek insurrection is like not a good movie, but I, I uh, was able to watch it. And it's very enjoyable. Piece you of feel schlock. like you wasted your time? No. Good. Yeah. See, and that's, and that's what a movie is supposed to be. So by that, think... by that measure, by the creeps measure, uh, Star Trek insurrection, be- better than white Knights. Yes, it is. I think the time. That's, I think the and moment that's, where and that's insane. That's insane. It is. It's not. It obviously isn't. But yeah. I, I, I mean, that's why I'm a I'm a Star Trek Five fan. <laughs> I know. I think the moment in this movie though that like the the most really dropped me was when uh was when uh, the main lady's like I don't like you anymore and he's like okay 
And then he goes after that other lady and she's like, you know, I see you walking around here all the time. He's like, why don't you walk with me, toots? And he just kind of like forces her around a little bit. And I was just like, what's happening here? Like, I know he was like acting out, but I was just like, this is strange. This is weird. This is weird, Jared. You ever acted out and just like elbowed some people, you know, really taking it to them? Like in a crowd? Sure. Anonymously? Sure. You want to hear about who hates this movie? Suppose. Wait, do you want to hear about the loose remake of this movie? Um, do I <laughs> loosely? So there, there's a few scenes that carry over. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, so I tricked RJ into watching a bad movie, I guess, or or equally bad. I'm not sure. It's called Two Lovers, by yeah, Doc, by by director movie. James Gray, and man, people really like this movie too. They do, and I feel like it's not. Warranted. It stars the it stars the Joker too. The Joker himself. The this jo- is a Joker. This is, this is number. This is number two though. It's not. It's not Joker one. It's actually They're it's all. Number, or is it all? Or is it the three Jokers? Jokers are a flat circle, Jarrett. So who's the okay? So there's three, the so, so there's three Jokers. Time. Who are they? Joaquin Heath and uh, Caesar Roma, Romero. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that's good, right? That's yeah. fair. Fuck you, Jack Nicholson. I mean, he's fine. But Get out of here, Mark Hamill. Also fine, but uh, what are we going to say? Oh, yeah, two lovers. Okay, so there's some scenes that carry over. There is a very uncomfortable dance scene with Joaquin Phoenix where he's breakdancing, and uh, I left the room when that was on. <laughs> I full on left because a- Andrew was watching with this me with this with me because she was nice and this scene was happening and i was like i'm leaving <laughs> i was like do you need anything from upstairs she's like no what are you getting i was like nothing i'm just gonna leave for five I'm, minutes I'm, and I'm, come back I, down. i'm gonna go preserve my dignity yeah i was like i don't want to watch this i don't want to see him in this situation no thanks you want to, you could stand to see uh what game did, did base himself and <laughs> i just i couldn't see them do it to my my guy i yeah, was like i just see. can't stand yeah, it's for this. Like, you're like thinking about signs yeah. Well, exactly. The pinnacle of of cinema and then this mm-hmm. just years later, Jared, six years later was all glad. Uh, so that scene carries over in this movie. He is the, the main person deciding between hip Gwyneth Paltrow yeah. and then that, which not, is like gross. Like it, it is. She's she's a, a vile human being in case you weren't yes. paying attention, folks. She yeah. is. She is a bad person. And she she's not likable in this either. But goop. Yeah, oh, goop so stupid. Uh. Water has feelings. <laughs> um, like, hey, maybe it does, RJ. It doesn't. I can tell you with confidence, water doesn't have feelings. But it's, uh, but it knows more than we do. Go on. <laughs> well, it's between her and she's kind of crazy in this too. Or uh, Vanessa Shaw, which is the the girl from Hocus Pocus. Oh and boy. She's, she's just like a, a wholesome Jewish lady who's like, I want to take care of you and make you sandwiches. And that uh, she's pretty, like, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah, but he's like, well, I don't know. Gwyneth Paltrow's into the goop. Maybe I'll do that. And you're just like, oh man. And then uh, Casey Jones from Ninja Turtles shows up for a little uh, bit. Elias Gutierrez. Yes, and I if he was in this more, it maybe would have been better. But uh, yeah, it's Joaquin picking between the two of them. And uh, just scanning it, people are just like, yeah, man, it's so true. Like, look at this. It's going to haunt you, man. And it's like, I really did not like this. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is like, this feels like Joker. It does. Like, this feels like what happened before Joker happens. Like, he's very... He's very awkward and uncomfortable. And like, I feel like what it is, is I think the biggest thing about this is they miscast him because I think he's, I think he's too good of an actor for this role where it seemed like there was like complexity to this character, but it's like, I don't think they're supposed to be. I think it's just supposed to be a guy. Just throw like, (laughs) as Andrew said, just throw Mark Ruffalo in here and then you'll get the movie. So who's like, so who, which crappy actor should be in this role? Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Go, go get, go get, go get get Hulk. (laughs) Yeah. And it would be completely like, go get that superficial Mark Ruffalo. Poor guy. This is, this is the kind of crap he was in for a while. Oh, I know, I know, and it's it's uh, it, that's what I mean. It's seeing Joaquin and what, what Joaquin. What, 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 what about trying. how about Bill Hader? I, I think Bill Hader would even <laughs> outshine uh, in this one. Hey, 
more than uh, the roughster. And I actually, I don't mind Mark Ruffalo. I just, I don't <laughs> think he's a very good actor. So a... you, you guys go watch Infinity War and you tell me if he's good or not. But but yeah, loosely based. It's not worth your time, Jarrett. But you did, uh, you presented it to me and I said, okay. It's like, I'll do it's, it. I think you said, is it anywhere online? I went, it's on Prime. And then you, <laughs> and you watched it immediately. So. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a mistake, but yeah. Well, you took the hit for the team this time. I tried. Yeah, I tried. So tell me about who hates this movie. Uh, well, Brian Strang is not okay. a fan of uh, Le Nord de Bianchi. Uh, yeah, one and a half stars. Venice is actually just a one, or sorry, it's just a five hundred meter circle filled with insane people. Because why wouldn't they be? They live in a five hundred meter circle. They could never escape. That's it. Um, I guess. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, nice, nice, nice one, dude. Yeah. Their favorite films are The Hud Sucker Proxy, Freebie and the Bean, Enter Laughing, and The Last of the Mohicans. Ooh. All their half-star films are nothing that I've ever heard of or care to watch. Okay. Except they gave... Uh, the Wraith half a star, and I think you're a fan of the Wraith. Yeah, Wraith Wraith's cool. Wraith is yeah. Cool. So they're wrong there. Wraith is definitely better than this movie. Yes, I from what I've heard, it yeah. sounds true. Good. Yep. Uh, how about Sassipos? Sassipos? Two stars. I see him. It's hit or miss with Visconti. Adapting Dostoevsky to screen is a plain bad idea. Even though White Knights is a small book for about 100 pages, this movie fails to capture the atmosphere and psychological state in the book. Wow, there you go. Yeah, You can't argue with that. Nope. And I can't argue with Sassipos, because their favorite films are Marikheta Lazarova, Earth from 1930, I Am Cuba, and The 400 Blows. Ooh. But they have starred. Well, Mar- well, I just was like Marquetta Lazarova, and I had to think about it for a sec. That movie's really good. Is it? Yep. It's very. Is very it? that, that's a good, uh, nice looking movie. I mean, this person's opinions aren't bad. Oh, I stand corrected. They have starred Apocalypto, and they have starred Norbit. Jared. Oh no, not Norbit. <laughs> that's Creeps approved. Both Creeps hosts love that film. Both five stars. Um, one stars. one more, Hada. Mm-hmm. Kyle Faulkner, two and a half stars. This is a lengthy one. Okay. First rewatch in twenty years, and yeah, nah, my immune system has built up too much resistance to fifties. <laughs> um, huh? to the nineteen fifties, I guess of cinema. I'm, <laughs> I thought it was gonna fun. It's like I can't take this nineteen fifties stuff. Dr- Strange. Drifter Mastrioni gets friend zoned by Superman's Maria Shell. Hey, look at that! After her broody beau Jean Marais scarpers from the screen, most prob to get mytho metaphysical with mirrors or be otherwise dressed in children's clothing by Cocteau. Remember that. Remember, mm-hmm. remember him in those Blood of the Poet Orpheus movies? Remember, oh, I remember Orpheus. <laughs> remember every frame of those fucking movies? No. Oh, no one does. I do. No, I do. You're lying. That sort of ships in the night brief encounter scenario where you just want to grab him and shake him. The more time they spend together, he grapples with the gray area between Samaritan safety net and squeeze while she glimmers like a swan's neck in the snow. Her caterwauls across the canals for her Orphe, matched by incessant lugubrious, lugu- lugubrious violence. Lugubrious? lugubrious? I love lugu- violence. lugubrious. The yeah. Dostoy uh, resource text keeps the emo psych interplay on the simmer and enriched, but there's a single nodal punctum that elevates this from passive melodrama to spirited reverie, the spontaneous stance sequence at around the hour mark. The R&B needle drop, oh yeah, that is pretty good, that was pretty decent. The R&B needle drop slaps the frost from your face mm-hmm. and drags you from your chair as a youth flexes his knees pneumatically, glaring into the lens in acknowledgement of his talent. 
bodies cut loose and weave across the floor, and the image is suddenly ablaze with kinesis. For the first time, our would-be oh, wow. lovers see each other, and the gap begins to close. Their deliberations and moral dilemmas cast asunder for a moment in time, and this is the movie right here. All their agonies become like ash amidst the laughter of Dionysius. Dance as connector tissue. Dance as love. But soon, the mirth allays, and they must return to the streets and the sleet, where the only intercourse is that of perpetual doubt. Gah, you nearly had me there, Lucino. Still your best work, though, IMO. That's a two and a half star review. Damn. I got to tell you, I'm I'm kind of on board with uh, Kyle Faulkner here. Yeah? Uh, he, he sounds like he's, uh, he's uh, had a whippet or two. Yeah, he's he's hitting the whippets. Uh, all their favorite films at the moment include Cat in the title, so I feel like that's not genuine. But uh, one thing I would be remiss if i didn't mention is they are currently working through the catalog of mr stan brackage jared dear 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 and here here's where i shine with this person half a star to midsummer half a star to texas chainsaw massacre 2 potentially for the screaming i don't know but they did half star the fountain which i don't think is fair oh but, you know, I mean, some of their ratings are pretty good. But I think it's funny that uh, they're ripping through Stan Brackage's stuff. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> who? Who was watching that stuff? Jackson? Actium Jackson Maximus? Like, who Who even knows that guy anymore? We don't. He doesn't even email in. Nope. Right, Chair? He doesn't. Hopefully he's not burning alive in the the heat dome. The heat dome? Is it kind of like the Thunderdome, Jeremy? Hey, we're up to like I think five hundred people have died in uh, Vancouver, I guess, in the last Terrific. three days. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Uh Oof. yeah. Grim. Just saw that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, things aren't good, Jared. Not not nice. Not nice. Yeah. You got any fun I mean, I don't even care about what people have to say positively about this movie. People, no, fuck that. Don't do that. If you like it, you like it. If not, Leave me alone. I feel like people people who relate to it are going to like it a lot. And people who don't, won't. And I'm uh, one of those people who don't. Yeah. So I won't. Mm-hmm. Not for not for me. I just want to watch, like... Gundams? V- videos of box openings of Magic Cards on YouTube instead. So <laughs> there's that, always that. Yeah, I mean, this thing barely had any Gundams in it. Not, so, like, not even one. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. Fuck this movie. <laughs> this movie's stupid. So yeah, is that, is that, that could be your, like, letterbox gimmick online. Barely any Gundams? Yeah. <laughs> Give it on how many Gundams appear in the movie. That... That was what I was. That was what I was gonna rate, uh, rate or review to lovers, but I couldn't pass up uh, my uh, my premium review that I I dropped on that one. Can you, would you share it with us in the audience listening at home? Two shitters. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yep. After the break, mm-hmm. um, we're gonna go be friends with the dog. Call it a day. That dog was the best part of this entire movie. So yeah. What, what about that? What about that dance scene? No. No. 